I had an awesome Christmas, not because of the presents, Santa, I don't know, the birth of Jesus, <laughs> but because in space, no one can hear you scream, and on Earth, it pff, won't pff, matter. Pff. That's right, Alien vs. Predator, Requiem. <laughs> and what better way to celebrate the birth of Jesus than by watching acid-spitting xenomorphs duke it out with the only thing that both Carl Weathers and Danny Glover have ever run away from. <laughs> Now, even though this film was easily the sickest flick of all time, it's also the last shiny fusion nail in the double adamantium coffin of science fiction. Why? Because it's the fifth movie in the Alien series, third movie in the Predator series, second movie in the Alien vs. Predator series, thus making this roughly the tenth combined installment, and clearly, there is a quality control issue in the genre of science fiction. But don't take my word for it. Just because I've seen all ten Star Trek movies like a dozen times each, that doesn't make me a credible source. <laughs> don't get worked up. I brought real sources, too. <laughs> According to Discover Magazine from July 27th, 2007, science fiction, the genre that once led the way for a nervous mankind as it crept through the shadows of the 20th century, has suddenly and entirely ceased to matter. Whether you're a fan or not, because science fiction has proven itself to be a source of both entertainment and social criticism. Let's first boldly go with, you know what, no. <laughs> oh, I prepared some very imaginative taglines for my signpost, but uh, frack that, cause, effect, solution, engage. <laughs> Just like the number of bullets left in the automated gun turrets in the attack scene from Aliens, I have two causes. The genre has first reached its creative capacity, and second, become nothing but a money-making machine. First, unlike me, science fiction has effectively reached its peak. I'm told I'm not even close. In an interview with the Times Online from August 30th, 2007, Director Ridley Scott said, in reference to science fiction films, there's nothing original. We've seen it all before. And he is Mr. Sci-Fi. He directed Alien, Blade Runner, Thelma and Louise. Wait, Thelma and Louise, yes, it is definitely sci-fi. Like most Hollywood productions, sci-fi now favors remakes, sequels, and adaptations of older works. For example, the only major science fiction film that has garnered widespread appeal from the past year has been the Transformers movie. And Transformers have been around since before the dawn of time. Oh, I refer to anything that happened before I was born as happening before the dawn of time. <laughs> In any case, modern science fiction's idea of innovation is adapting hundred-year-old novels that have already been made into movies before. For proof, see War of the Worlds, starring Tom Cruise and future Whore of the Worlds, Dakota Fanning. <laughs> Cause two. The genre is no longer a creative medium, but is simply a money-making machine. Once producers realized that it was the spectacle audiences were paying to see, and not the substance, science fiction became all boo, 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 and no more boo, 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 oh, mm. When money became the motivation, that's when we started to run into trouble. Trouble like Battlefield Earth. <laughs> Even if it is only mainstream science fiction that's guilty, it's still a problem. If the only science fiction stories that are getting any cinematic or literary merit are being pushed to the sideline, then they are doing little to continue the legitimization of the genre. Hold on. Sideline, sports analogy, sci-fi speech, danger with Robinson, danger! <laughs> Just like the number of humpback whales Captain Kirk goes back in time to save in Star Trek IV, <laughs> I have two effects. <laughs> the loss of the technical blueprint for the future and the loss of social commentary. First, Uh Sometimes I slip back into my native tongue. Klingon. Because science fiction has lost its creative edge, we have effectively lost the blueprint for future technologies. Granted, science fiction is responsible for those obnoxious Bluetooth headsets, but, on the other hand, according to a CNET article from September 7, 2007, 
Science fiction is also responsible for inspiring technologies such as space flight, handheld computers, and cellular phones. It's not that we've invented everything that we can possibly think of, but rather, we've stopped inventing in the realm of science fiction. Concepts like flying cars, humanoid androids, and time travel have all been present in the genre for decades. And with each passing day, these concepts get more boring and more upsetting. For example, right now, I am so bored and so upset. <laughs> in addition to losing the technical blueprint for the future, science fiction is also beginning to lose the social commentary that made the genre so important in the first place. According to the Washington Times from March 23rd, 2007, science fiction's futuristic landscapes were not simply a prediction of the future, but also a commentary on the present. Many great works of science fiction are regarded in such high esteem because of their ability to effectively, yet discreetly, raise awareness and discussion about pre pressing social issues. Examples like Star Trek, Dune, and 1984, in addition to their entertainment value, were important because they brought controversial concepts like racism, sexism, and the Vietnam War to the forefront of public focus. And by devaluing this aspect of the genre, we are just throwing away an avenue for social criticism that has been invaluable to our culture since before the dawn of time. <laughs> and yes, even before 1987. <laughs> Unlike science fiction, however, I am doing my part to keep the creativity alive. All right, guys, check this out. I'm a UFO. <laughs> And I've also got two solutions to help us bionically reconstruct the genre. I have the technology. I can rebuild it. There are two things we can do. First, seek out innovative science fiction. And second, start a renaissance within the genre. First, just because mainstream science fiction is recycling past ideas doesn't mean the whole genre is doing the same thing. It just means we need to explore a little more. Modern examples like Firefly, Battlestar Galactica, Children of Men, and even video games like Halo and Bioshock all have stories that are both entertaining and insightful. So, as awesome as Alien vs. Predator Requiem is in all of its acid-bleeding, face-melting, baby-slaughtering glory, <laughs> it is clear that we must go! Go now! Get to the chopper! Before science fiction self-destructs! And we can do that <laughs> by looking for something more innovative than Thelma and Louise to Chamber of the Rise of the Judgment Day Machines. <laughs> because the only commentary in this endless series of sequels and remakes is that we've come to the end of our imagination. And I refuse to believe for a second that that is entirely true. Second, we have to start a renaissance within the genre of science fiction. A renaissance fiction assance, if you will. <laughs> Back in 15th century Europe, people were having all sorts of problems. But then, a bunch of Italian artists, scientists, and philosophers banded together to form the sexy singing sensation, the Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> I'm kidding, they started a renaissance. <laughs> and according to January 11th, 2008, Entertainment Weekly, this is exactly what Stanley Kubrick did when he transformed a genre that he viewed as insignificant into a cultural and artistic force with 2001, A Space Odyssey. <laughs> this film not only changed the way we viewed the future, it helped legitimize science fiction as a modern art form. We need to do this again. We here are all such creative and imaginative people, so I'm telling you right now, <laughs> if you want to write a science fiction story that doesn't involve Captain Kirk or Luke Skywalker, that's allowed. You can do that. If you want to do Transformers as your DI, that's allowed. You can do that. If you want to play theme music during your solutions like a badass, that's allowed. I can do that. I am doing that.
just like the number of the ones in the matrix, I have the one conclusion. Science fiction is being pushed to the wayside. And as it goes, we are losing a tool for not only guiding our future, but also analyzing the present. Saving science fiction goes far beyond simply rescuing a genre. It's about protecting the potential of mankind. In other words, save science fiction, save the world.